My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. Today's video is entitled Heart Failure, Does Testosterone Hold the Key? Now, one of the reasons I wanted to start this channel was because of my frustration at how limited we were when it came to treating heart disease patients. Of course, one of the reasons for this is that we simply don't know enough. But another reason is that medicine as a whole has become very defensive. We only offer the patient those therapies which are recommended by clinical guidelines because that is medically legally defensible. We never step outside of the guidelines for the sake of that individual patient because that could get us into trouble. Uh, what this has resulted in is the belief that if the therapy is not recommended in the guidelines, then it's not even worth having a conversation about. This is why I started this channel. I wanted to empower patients who continue to be troubled despite being on guideline recommended therapies by telling them, informing them about other therapies that may be helpful which have not made it into the guidelines. Today's video therefore is on the subject of heart failure. Heart failure is a chronic clinical syndrome characterized by the inability of the heart to pump out enough blood to meet the body's requirements. In that sense, heart failure is the end complication of virtually all forms of cardiac pathology. If you have a big heart attack, for example, and survive it, then the concern is that the damage caused to the heart may lead to the heart not being able to work as effectively as a pump, and this is called heart failure. Similarly, myocarditis, which is very much in the news these days, and myocarditis is inflammation of the heart. If the inflammation is severe, it may affect the heart's ability to pump effectively, and that will lead to heart failure. Anything that affects the heart in a bad way may, in its severest form, lead to heart failure. Unfortunately, the term heart failure has unnecessarily negative connotations. A better term may be cardiac insufficiency. The heart hasn't failed, it just doesn't match up to the body's requirements, especially when those requirements are increased, such as during exercise. Heart failure or cardiac insufficiency have marked negative effects both on quality of life and quantity of life. Patients with a weak heart do not in general live as long as those with a strong heart, and people with a weak heart in general have a worse quality of life compared to those with a strong heart. It is also important to know that heart failure is a multi-system disorder because the heart is responsible for pumping blood to the rest of the body. Virtually all systems of the body suffer as a consequence of heart failure. So people with heart failure are going to be more prone to kidney failure and they're going to be more prone to dementia and they're going to be more prone to strokes. And they're also going to be more prone to muscle wasting and weight uh, loss and and anemia, and they may also develop hormonal deficiencies. And all these complications have an additional negative effect, both on quality of life and quantity of life. So if you have heart failure, and you then start developing kidney failure as a result of the heart failure, then the outcome is worse compared to if you had heart failure without the kidneys being affected. Um, now, heart failure, thankfully, is one of the most researched conditions in all of medicine, and happily we now have lots of very beneficial therapies which can improve both quality of life and as well as quantity of life. These include ACE inhibitors, these are medications which end uh, with ill, so ramipril, lisinopril, perindopril, etc. Uh, in addition, we also have beta blockers, they end in all, carvedilol, bisoprolol, nebivolol, aldosterone antagonists, they are, are medications such as spironolactone, aplerinone. There's another class of medication now called entresto. And then there is a new class of medications called SGLT2 inhibitors, such as dapagliflozid. And all these are medications that have been shown to improve outcomes in people with heart failure, and they are making it to the guidelines. Most of them are already on the guidelines, and the new medications have also started making it to the guidelines, such as the dapagliflozid. Nevertheless, despite all these medications, patients with significant heart failure may continue to deteriorate, lose muscle mass and strength, get frailer, weaker, and have an ever-worsening quality of life. This increasing frailty also contributes in a big way to the very high mortality rates uh, seen in patients with severe heart failure. The mortality rates are in the order of 30% per year. 
and we therefore need more therapies that may improve quality of life in these patients. And this is why I wanted to talk to you about testosterone. Now, as healthy men age, there is a fall in testosterone, and alongside this, there is a decrease in muscle mass, muscle strength, and lower extremity strength. When we give testosterone to healthy men with testosterone deficiency, we see an increase in lean body mass and muscle mass. Now, when we look at heart failure patients, we find that up to 37% of patients with heart failure have testosterone deficiency. So over about a third of patients with heart failure have testosterone deficiency. And low testosterone levels are associated with increased um, vascular resistance. This means it makes it even harder for the heart to pump blood to the vital organs and reduced heart rate variability. In addition, testosterone is recognized to have anti-inflammatory properties and heart failure is a condition of inflammation. Heart failure is very inflammatory and therefore patients with low testosterone and heart failure have even higher levels of inflammation. Clinically, patients who have heart failure and are deficient in testosterone will have more muscle wasting, reduced exercise capacity and a worse quality of life. When testosterone is given intravenously, we see that the vascular resistance decreases and the output of the heart improves. When testosterone is given over a period of time, we see inflammation gets less. We know this because people have mo measured inflammatory blood markers like tumor necrosis factor alpha, and they've been found to get less when you give testosterone therapy. So, there have been a few studies looking at testosterone replacement in men with heart failure, and although the studies are very small, the results are certainly very interesting. There was a meta-analysis in the Journal of American College of Cardiology in 2016, which looked at all the studies that had been done and concluded that replacement with transdermal or intramuscular testosterone seemed to result in a significant improvement in exercise capacity. We measure exercise capacity by doing something called a six minute walk test where you get the patient to walk for six minutes and measure how far they got. And in uh, patients who were given testosterone who had heart failure, the six minute walk test distances increased by 54 meters. Uh, we can also do shuttle walk tests and this increased by the, the distances on the shuttle walk test increased by 46.7 meters. And these are improvements that are comparable to, to some of the most effective licensed medications for heart failure. In addition, quality of life markedly improved. You know, 35% uh, of the patients in the uh, testosterone replacement group said that their quality of life had gone up. More importantly, there was no increase in adverse events in the testosterone replacement group compared to placebo. And one very important observation to mention is that the benefits of testosterone supplementation and heart failure may not just be limited to male patients. There was an interesting small study published in the Journal of American College of Cardiology, which showed that testosterone supplementation in women also improved functional capacity and muscle strength, uh, particularly in elderly women with advanced heart failure. Now, whilst these are promising data, Unfortunately, not many doctors look for or treat testosterone deficiency in patients with heart failures, and this is because most doctors tend to be protocol-centered rather than patient-centered, and at present, checking for testosterone levels routinely and treating testosterone deficiency has not made it into the protocols and guidelines. We will need bigger studies to understand the benefits and cost-effectiveness of testosterone replacement before our learned experts who author these protocols will decide to change the status quo. However, if you have heart failure or have a relative who has heart failure and are continuing to struggle despite medications, it would certainly be an excellent idea to ask your doctor to measure testosterone levels in the first instance. Your doctor is not going to do it routinely and therefore it is important you ask them to. If it is low, then it is certainly worth having a conversation with the doctor about the points I've discussed in this video. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you more than you will ever know.
All the best. Take care. Bye.